good evening, Carl. How are you tonight? Good evening, David. Very well, thank you. Can't believe this. That was good. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Here, I I shut it out. That's okay. Um, now the baby's crying. <laughs> I've had this word on my mind. It, it keeps coming up because I work with a lot of people who say they do this. And uh, and you actually said yourself that you do this or practice this. So I would like for you to explain to me what Reiki is, uh, where the word Reiki. comes from. So that's our word for today. And so can you please tell me what it is and what <laughs> you do and what does it... Please tell me what it is. What is it? <laughs> okay, Reiki is... Um, it, it's a Japanese word comes from from Japan and it is um, a modality of healing that was um, brought to the West um, or actually was uh, developed or came to light by a gentleman called Dr. Um, Usui in Japan and it all started um, when he was a teacher in um, uh, a seminary for priests, Christian priests in Japan. And um, he was asked by one of his students, do you believe everything that is written in the Bible? And he said, sure. And the uh, student said, well, in the Bible it said, that Jesus uh, could heal uh, by touch, by, you know, thinking about healing or just putting his hands on someone. And he said, yeah. And so, well, can you show us how to do that? Because also Jesus says, I don't remember the exact quote from the, a quote from the Bible, but also it's written that Jesus says that you, the people, will be able to do everything that I do. So I, don't, I cannot quote the exact quote, especially not in English. Maybe I could in Hebrew, but not in English. And anyways, uh, he said, well, if it's true that Jesus could heal by touching, and if it's true that we as people can do whatever Jesus do, please teach me how to heal someone how to ease somebody's pain, how to ease somebody's suffering, by touching, by putting my hands on them. Dr. Rosui did not know the answer. And according to uh, Japanese tradition, as far as I know, if once a teacher is approached with a question, he's supposed to give the answer. And if he doesn't know the answer, He's supposed to go on a, on a search and find it. So Dr. Rousseau said, well, what kind of a teacher am I? If my student asks me a question and I cannot answer it, I have to go on a search. And actually he went on what we might call a quest. Uh. And he started to, to travel. He actually traveled all over the world and he couldn't find the answer. Nobody could teach him how to heal how to make everything better like Jesus did. So at the end, he decided to go uh, on a retreat on the holy mountain Fujiyama in Japan. Um, and he went there and he has been there for 21 days. And the legend says that at the end of the 21 days, he saw a light coming from afar and the light hit him here and he understood that whatever questions he was looking for, he probably, he got the answer. So he just, he, he, he understood he has to go back to the people. And when he, as he came down from the mountain, uh, he actually met some people who were, who I'm not going to go into the, all the details of the story, but he actually met with some people who needed some uh, help. And uh, he put his hand on them and they actually healed. So 
he went back to the city and he, and he just told people, um, anybody who needs help, needs healing, I'm here, come. And so he thought it was a gift that he got. He didn't ask for anything in return. He just healed people and people would, um, would um, become, um, uh, you know, uh, well again, and they could go back to community and they would go to the temple to receive a name again, you know, as a person, he's not out of society, he's now back a, a member, an active member of society. But after a few years, he saw that they, that he started to see familiar faces. So actually people that he healed a few years back are now back in the same situation. So he told them, well, what happened? You were here, you were given everything you needed, you went back to society, you have a family, you have a business, how come you're back here? And some of these people told them, well, look, it's too hard. <laughs> it's too difficult to be an active member of society. It's easier for me to be uh, somebody outside of society and come here to your clinic and to get healed for nothing. And people on the street will give me food for nothing. And uh, why do I need all this responsibility? So we then understood that this is not the way. And he developed um what we are now called the uh, reiki system uh reiki is uh, two words ray uh universal key is energy like chi like you know um okay so it's the same thing just different pronunciation and what it is is uh is energy that actually teaches the healer um mm, what's the word i'm looking for to be a little uh, humble, okay? So when I, uh, like when I invite you to my clinic or you come to my clinic and I give you a Reiki session, it's not my power. Because <laughs> a lot of healers are like, oh, I've got the power, you know, come to me. I have the power, I can heal you. This of course is not never true. I cannot heal you or anybody else. I can open the gate. I can open the door for you to, to, to start on a healing process, but your healing is not in my hands. So Reiki is actually an ancient type of energy that if I allow it, it will flow through me and will come to you. And the person that actually decides how much Reiki is going to pass through is the receiver. Okay? Ah. So when you are on my massage table and I will maybe put my hands, maybe I will not put my hands, maybe they will be in a distance, it will be you who will actually pull the energy into you to your needs. Of course, there are uh, more advanced techniques that I can do intentionally different things with this energy. But the basic, very, very wonderful energy teaches us to be very humble. No, it's not your power. It's something you say, yes, I agree. I let this energy flow through me and come to whoever. Actually, as we talk, I can feel the energy <laughs> starting to move because I'm talking about it. I know to some maybe very um, logic thinkers, this sound like fairy tale. I know because I'm like that too. I have my two feet based on the ground and I need proof. Show me. You know, I need science. I need, this sounds like magic. What are you talking about? This doesn't sound like real stuff. And this is ex exactly what I thought. I thought to myself, learning all sorts of healing technique for many, many years. And here come this very, very easy energy 
I can actually teach you to do that. All I need is one hour of your time. And after that, you could actually let Reiki pass, pass through you and give it to everybody else. Um, no, I, I have to be receptive to receiving the power. You, um, uh, yeah, yeah, we can say it this way, yes. But I'm probably coming from a very logical standpoint, so it's probably... A yeah, good, that's good, because example. I was like this too, and I was like, cannot be, cannot be. I mean, healing is something that you learn many, many, many years. Cannot be that you come to somebody, you go through some kind of a process, and there you are, you can do it. You're a Reiki practitioner. It didn't make sense to me. So, but then I, when, but then I saw things happen, and with uh, with what happens, you can't argue. Yeah. So, do you? And there, yeah, but in the one, one more thing, in okay. the in the, if you think about it, this is something very natural that every person can do, and babies can do, and they don't need to learn it. Okay, yeah. baby knows a, a little kid knows that if somebody, if another kid in, in, in kindergarten ran and fell and hurt his knee, they know to come to him and to say, Oh, you know, it's okay, it's okay, what happened to you? And, and they know to do it naturally. But our way of life, this is uh, we talked about listening to nature. Okay, yeah. so and this is something that is very natural to us. But our way of life sort of uh, cre created a disconnection from our na natural way of being. Um, so we're saying, no, I'm not going to, you know, no, I'm not going to touch everybody. I'm not going to hug everybody. I'm not, no. So, you know, the first thing a mother does when her child is sick or hurt, she picks him up, she kisses him, and it's all gone. Right? Don't you say, oh, here, I'll give you a kiss and it's going to be yeah. all gone, all better. We yeah. do it naturally. So, yeah. but Reiki is an energy you cannot deny. You feel it, you cannot deny it. It's a very, very pleasant, warm, velvety like energy that you can feel. You can actually is it, feel it. Is it something that you, is it something that you learn or is it something that you just, become receptive to that you you feel that you you understand it all you learn you learn the technique and then you realize that oh my god i've always known it so in in the in the in the more uh, advanced levels of reiki um there are symbols that you use the reiki symbols when i when i first learned to be a reiki teacher the first thing I wanted was my children to have this gift. So if something happened to them, all they need to do is put their hands because you can do Reiki to yourself. This is actually the first thing we teach is to self -reiki. to yourself. Yeah. So the first thing I wanted to do to have my kids, so my kids will know it. I think, um, when, when was that? Maybe 95 or 96. So I, I came home and I set up the room, you know, and I, I set my kids down and you do this uh, ritual when the recipient is sitting with his eyes closed and you draw all the signs and everything, all the different symbols. And I see my daughter, <coughs> sorry, my daughter, my youngest daughter, she's now 30 years old. She was at the time five or six years old. She is sitting very seriously <laughs> with her eyes closed and I'm doing the symbols on, you know, in the air on her back. And she's, so she doesn't see what I'm doing and she doesn't feel, I'm not touching her. I'm just doing it like this, you know? And she raises her hand in the air and she draws the symbols. So something there is, is going on that is magical, yes. Um, I don't know if any science, scientific research has been done on this. And frankly, I don't care. 
<laughs> I really don't care because it's something that works and, and people yeah. feel that. People feel that. So it's like an apple. I can bring you all the scientific facts of, about an apple, but you will never know what an apple is until you take a bite. So you, yeah. you will have to take a bite. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I work with um, a lot of people that uh, do card readings and um, uh, they're, they're psychic and they talk to um, spirits and people and um, one of them is actually the yes. daughter of somebody who was quite famous and I'm doing a bit of work with her building a new website and everything. And uh, oh. how... Well, what are the similarities between these these two things, if there's any at all? It's not similar because cards are um, a, a transitional tool, okay? I have many types of cards. Some of them are tarot cards and some of them are um, um, just cards, just pictures. And actually, the thing is, that everything that your eyes show you, you can uh, treat as something meaningful or you can just discard, okay? Uh, um, so if I see, if I just say, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to uh, open up a card every day. And uh, if I knew you wanted to talk about cards, I would have some right up here and I would show you. Oh, no, we will talk about cards, but probably another time. I was... Okay, I, so put it on our list. Yeah. So similar? Yeah. They're not I, that similar. They're not that similar, but they're not that different because what it is is you, uh, the person you say, well, I'm willing to acknowledge that is something that I don't understand. And I'm willing to open up to more things than what is obvious and what the science tells me. And we, oh, I think everybody knows that there is something out there. I don't know how you want to call it, but, you know, things happen. Sometimes you call them coincidence. Sometimes you say, oh, it's a miracle. And sometimes you say, so things happen that are not uh, done by you when they were not... Um, you didn't mean them to happen, okay? You didn't control what's going on and, oh, how come this is exactly what I needed? How come this happens now? So things happen and some things science can prove, but actually, if you think about it, electricity wasn't any less electricity before science knew what it was. So, it, if I was a person, let's say, in the 14th century and somebody came and, and you know, did this movement and then and here there is light, I would say, oh, my God, that's a magician. Magic. Actually, actually, when Edison um, uh, had uh, put electricity uh, uh, in New York uh, in... Um, J.P. Morgan's house. J.P. Morgan's father was really, really, really angry at J.P. Morgan's um, uh, attempt to, uh, to start a new uh, industry because he told them, you let those, uh, you know, wizards and, and witchcraft and all these people uh, tamper with your mind. You know, this is actually what this man told him. And look now, we wouldn't be talking if we didn't have electricity. That's right. That's we yeah. wouldn't, would we? Um, I wouldn't even know you without electricity. No, and, oh, big magic. What, what a terrible thought that is! Not knowing me. Oh. <laughs> but okay, so uh, it, it sort of leans to one of my favourite words uh, in the game of life, and that is the word of belief. Um, mm, yeah. um, I, I, I strongly believe that it is what it is if you believe what it is and yes that's true and I'm saying if uh, let's say Reiki okay so some people will tell me it only works for those who believe in it 
And I said, okay, maybe that's true. But if you will believe in it, it'll do you good. Why not believing in it? It's like what I told you about the apple. An apple is an apple, whether you believe in it or not. But you can enjoy the apple only if you will taste it. And it's the same for Reiki. Reiki is Reiki. Believe it, not believe it. It doesn't matter. No, okay. You will give it, give it, you it will enjoy shell. it if you try it. <laughs> so in, in a nutshell, how, how can Reiki help me? As, as, as a, as a, not just me, but um, as, as an individual, <laughs> as a human, as a person, how can Reiki the, the make truth my is life better? That if, uh, if you talk to a real professional uh, practitioner of Reiki or any other healing methods, the only answer is I don't know. <laughs> it's not in my hands. And I don't know what kind of healing you want. And most times, most people don't know what kind of healing they need. What, what do I mean? I mean, somebody might come and tell me that he is suffering from a headache or a backache. And that's what he wanted to, to me to treat. Okay. And I will. I say, okay, let's do this. Yeah. And we start working on the headache or the, or the backache or whatever ache. And then all of a sudden the person starts crying and then he will tell me a story of, I don't know, being abused or whatever it was or, you know, and so things will come up that you don't even intend to. And not always, sometimes you will come to a Reiki se session and it'll just be bliss. You know, the one thing I can tell you for sure about Reiki that people are saying over and over and over and over and over again is that people feel a very, very beautiful feeling of, of peacefulness and tenderness and sweetness when they get, when they start to feel that energy. And even if that's the only thing that happens, okay, you will come to my clinic or not in my clinic, maybe we'll set up a time and I will uh, give you a Reiki session when you're in Australia and I'm in Israel, we can do that too. Oh, how exciting. A long distance. Wow. Yeah, 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 it does. We do. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll say a few words about this in a minute. But uh, even if the only thing that happens, you come to my clinic, you will lay down or sit down, doesn't matter, on my massage table or on a chair. We can do it on a chair. You, 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 you keep your clothes on and everything is very respectable. <laughs> okay. And even if the only thing that happens is that when you get up and go, you have this nice feeling and everything is sweet and everything is, you know, okay. And how wrong can that be? <laughs> so that, that's the only thing that happens. So really it's, it, it could be um, physical and mental or internal healing through the mind based on how receptive your patient or customer is uh, that's receiving the, the treatment? The mo well, no, because... Oh, um, damn it, I thought I was on Yeah, it. yeah, because you're a, a mind kind of person. So oh, it's, yeah, it's but that's why question. I want to go there, yes. <laughs> I know, I know, it's a good question. But the truth of it is that Reiki Level 1, we actually tell people, we teach people to mean as less as possible because you don't really know as a practitioner what's the best outcome for that person that's very 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 um pretentious out of anybody to believe they know what's truth for another person we don't know what is truth for another person uh, so we actually teach uh, people who come to first learn reiki to stop thinking you can, we can chat and I can, and I can ask this energy to just flow through me and go to you. And the less I think about it, the better. All I'm asking you as the receiver or the recipient is when we start, I will just say, David, please, you know, close your eyes for one minute, take a deep breath and just Stay in your mind, put the intention that you are willing to open up to receive this 
loving, beautiful energy. And that is it. That's it. That's all I want you to do. Okay, you're very good. <laughs> it is. We, we actually, we're going to try this <laughs> one night. Okay. Um, live. You want to try it live? <laughs> we will try it live. I can't wait for that one. But it, it's okay. going back to what you said before. It's going back to the place of the child where yes. everything is stripped away and you've just got the rawness and, and everything is so much easier that's simple yeah everything is so much easier i was after two weeks i haven't seen my sweet grandson tom i went to visit him yesterday and you know he's two years old so he's very opinionated and he knows exactly what he wants and if something doesn't go his way he will a whole hell will break loose you know he will and a second later he's just all smiling and everything's fine you know <laughs> nothing is no drama you know you just so yeah we we sort how, of lost how, that how lucky children are to be to be what they are and is, isn't it a oh, it's a tragedy that we can't remember just how great it was when we were one yeah i believe i know i know i'm sure we will make we will have a session or or a meeting or a discussion about about the inner child if if we didn't put it on the list we should here it goes, but, here it goes. My eye, eye contact going away <laughs> from the camera i've got something important to write here the inner oh, child. very good inner child but actually i really believe in I really encourage anybody who will ever watch us any any time in the future to let the children teach you. Just watch them and, and let them teach you because they are the best teachers. If you are looking for a spiritual teacher, look at children.